Good evening. Uh, happy sixth day of the week. I like to call it Animal and Man Day. A lot of you would call it Freya. And some of you wonder why I don't just say the days of the week. Well, I still remember uh, thinking that there was something up with the days of the week um, in a boat the year 2001. And that was long before I ever realized that the spherical theories were actually false. Now that I know that, I have to uh, set this trend. And not everybody necessarily understands, but uh, I can assure you that uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And there is no way I'm just going to say those days of the week anymore. Because they are simply not words of life. And unfortunately, children are dying. Did you know that children are being harvested for adrenochrome? That's adrenaline-rich blood. So not only are they killed, but they are actually traumatized by something called satanic ritual abuse as they are killed. So that that makes their blood adrenaline-rich. And then there are certain very extremely sick people who like to drink that blood because it thinks they think it prolongs their life. Now, some of you may be in shock after hearing that and maybe even disbelief, kind of like when you find out that the earth is flat and you think, why would they do that? Why would they lie to us like that? I want to challenge you to no longer put that in the conditional. There's no need to put that in the conditional. The conditional implies that it may not have happened you don't need to imply that it may not have happened. It did happen. So instead of asking why would they lie to us like that, we should be asking them why did they. But they love it when we put it in the conditional and imply that they wouldn't do it because then they keep right on doing it. And uh, I have no time for that. In fact, I want to give you a challenge. Why would I do this? Why would we do this? I cannot, I can hardly put into words some of the frustrations I've endured since uh, embarking on this uh, task of helping to wake the world up to the truth about the earth. There's no way, and here's another thing. These victims of that satanic ritual abuse, why would they make up stories like that? Such as, hmm... Well, Carly, I'm going to mention your name again. Carly Noel, Franz, I do want I'd appreciate you minding your language because sending people your way and are they going to hear some F-bombs? If, if you hear dropping an F-bomb, feel free to just get out of there and carry on your way. But I know she didn't mean any harm. And one of the reasons she started dropping those bombs is I know she was plugged into ODD. And ODD, it's good that you're a flat earther, but it's not good that you drop those F-bombs. And in my opinion, you taught Carly Noel, sort of emboldened her to do that. And she wasn't doing that before. So anyway, nevertheless, she was the victim of some horrific abuse. There is no reason why she would ever make up those stories. And it's so outrageous that these people disbelieve her. On top of all she's been through, then people start to disbelieve her. Don't ever do that. Keep seeing these... Uh, billboards and advertisements where they say it's so important when somebody's been the victim of abuse to put your hand on, the, on their shoulder and say, I believe you. Well, Carly, I definitely believe you. Definitely believe you. And uh, I'd love to see a day where I can subscribe to your channel again. I'll just have to not be encountering F-bombs because I will unsubscribe when I do find stuff like that. But... Uh, there's a time for everything, and I know it's time for me to put in a word for Carly Noel and say she is uh, someone who witnessed firsthand a boy her age being harvested for his adrenal chrome. So this is an extremely serious matter, and uh, in a previous video, I invited you, if you'd be willing, to watch the movie Inside Out. I've actually rented it, so I haven't watched it yet, but I'm ready to do my homework. 
or do my part of the homework. Oh, but, and that's optional homework. Nobody has to do any of this stuff. But I do recommend watching it if you'd like to. I'm looking forward to watching it again and refreshing my memory and giving you my thoughts regarding it and how it even relates to uh, the earth being flat and helping people to understand that and how to go about it. And uh, I really think those spherical theories are just like that light bulb turns around and all of a sudden there's this idea in her head, this ridiculous, silly, even stupid idea. But that's not stopping her from doing it until the hero shows up, the unsung hero. And that's where I say, Dad, excuse me while I pray. Help me to remember um, who I should remember. And I, I remember a brother. I pray for him. He's not a flat earther at all. He hates it when I talk about the earth being flat. But we need him on board. Pray that that will get him on board and explain it to him in language that he can understand that uh, we are going to win this uh, war. We're going to win this battle. And we're going to uh, abolish preborn baby sacrifice, also known as quote unquote abortion, also known as a woman's supposed right choose. I know I'm sort of uh, stirring up a bit of a hornet's nest by saying that. So friends, one of my dreams is to set women free to simply have their baby if they get pregnant. And even, I'm even going to say even when they get pregnant because uh, a dear friend shared a very accurate post where he was explaining how uh, contraception sort of in the same family as so-called abortion i call it pre-born baby sacrifice i even go so far as to call it a, a woman's silly right to choose and uh one demographic i say that in remembrance of is the women who exercise that so-called right to choose and then lived and live with the regret of that so-called choice for the rest of their lives. As far as I'm concerned, uh, I must do what I can to expose that, but I also must be consistent, which is agonizing. And uh, I certainly pray that God will help me to do that because I can't expect it to fly if I'm not consistent and as I read in Romans chapter 7, that which I do, I allow not. So I've been making progress. I need to continue to make progress. I even made progress today. Took one of my Instagram accounts and just, you know, pretty much unplugged it, deactivated it because it was just time. So rest assured that uh, I don't expect anyone to like it when I'm a hypocrite. And... I will be perfect and I'm going to be perfect, but um, that's going to involve me continuing to weed out the hypocrisy and I certainly apologize for hypocrisy and uh, resolve to uh, continue to submit to God's will as he weeds out that hypocrisy and matures me to the point where... Uh, People can trust me because if you can't trust me then uh, it's just not going to be good so some of you might have found it hurtful what I said I apologize if you did I know that uh, I used to get pretty frustrated when people didn't respect me now I simply pray that I will uh, be meek and have power under control but there is a time to speak and a time to be silent. And one of the reasons I'm so adamant about the earth being flat is I, I consider it 
our secret weapon against the pro-death giant. So that's a little secret. So there you go. We have the Earth being a spherical planet orbiting the sun. We have pre-born baby sacrifice, also known as a woman's, in my opinion, silly right to choose. Ideas that get planted in our heads. And I find it so ironic, and I'm going to see it all over again, that movie Inside Out. There comes a point where even anger realizes that it's madness. And he wants to stop her. And he tries, in vain of course, to get the same idea that he planted in her head, out of her head. And he can't do that. He can't, fear can't, disgust can't, and my my favorite, certainly one, yeah, among my favorite parts of the movies were Joy doesn't even try. Doesn't even try. And that's maturity right there. Joy absolutely matured because before her maturity, she would have tried and tried and tried and, of course, failed. And then you got sadness. I love that. Yeah, that, that has to be my favorite part of the movies where sadness. Um, she's a reluctant. Well, you know, anyway. I love the way she... She doesn't hurry, she doesn't rush, she meditates, she concentrates, and she turns it, and it comes out. What a glorious moment that is. Really, if there's any favorite part of that movie, it's, it's when... Dad and mom are just beside themselves. They, they don't know what to do. They've done everything they can, including phone her. They don't know what to do. And then, <laughs> all of a sudden, what? There she is. What? She's here. What? <laughs> She's there. Yes. And it's all thanks to the hero. So, I'm not going to spoil it any more than that. I just thought I'd give you a little bit of a teaser. And uh, I'm going to eat some food, God willing. Watch that movie. And uh, I guess uh, I'll uh, report back to you once I've done my share of my own homework. And uh, again, thanks to the subscribers that have been there for a very long time. And thanks to the new subscribers. And I know I lost one. I had a certain number and I saw the number today. That means I lost someone. And, uh, can't say I'm happy about that, but certainly pray that you'll know that I appreciate you uh, subscribing. And again, it says in Proverbs 4, verse 2, For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. I want you to get good doctrine. I want you to get words of life, and I want to uh, want to put a one more recommendation. <sighs> There's a movie called Unplanned. Did very well in the, in the United States, but I'm having a revelation right here and right now that one of the reasons it's not showing in Canada is that God has actually hardened Canada's heart. So that that movie is banned in Canada. It's a form of his judgment on the nation of Canada. And I'm sad about it. But I repent of the fact that I got mad about it. I asked Cineplex, when are you going to show Unplanned? They hadn't. And I sort of said, oh, they just showed that you have something to hide. And I was speaking in anger. And those weren't words of life. Those, again, as I'm going to see all over again in the movie, anger just does not solve problems. If there's anything anger does, it just create problems. 
and you see another scene where you can see which emotion is at the forefront in the man's mind and just the that emotion just creates a problem that totally did not exist I don't want to do that and I want to uh, do what Yeshua also known as Jesus did he wept wept over Jerusalem, or also known as Jerusalem. He said, oh, I would love to gather you as a hen gathers her chicks, and you would not. By the way, I'm a vegan, okay? I don't eat eggs, I don't really drink milk, at least any more than I feel like it, and I haven't felt like it much these days. It took a long time for me to finally get to this point where... Uh, I'm just totally happy to eat my vegan supper. So if it takes you a while to get hip to uh, the earth being flat, I pray that I will understand. It took me a while too. Definitely took me a while. I didn't. I definitely didn't just jump at it when I learned that there were flat earthers in existence in the world today. So. Uh, but I pray you'll come to know it. It's, uh, here, look. I'm so glad I'm doing this. Because over to my right, you can see uh, a picture. And you know how they say a picture's worth a thousand words? Let me show you the flat earth. Maybe for the first time that you've ever seen it. Let's take in the flat earth. There it is. Notice how I'm just following the horizontal horizon. And I love the fact that our creator, God, some people call him Elohim, maybe someday I'll do that. For now, I'm doing good to call him Yahweh and his son Yeshua. But yeah, how's that for a picture's worth a thousand words? there's the heavens which declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork and tonight we will be seeing a waxing gibbous moon please observe it and please simply ask yourselves where would the Sun have to be in order to be lighting that moon according to the spherical theories and then of course not only figure out what direction the sun would have to be relative to the moon, but then also project that. How far away is that again? Bear with me as I do this. But I am determined not to just say the number. Okay, let's count to it. We can count fast. We'll double the values. Okay, ready? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16... 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, 2048, 4096, 8192, 16384, 32768. Uh, these numbers I still have to mem memorize, but uh, about. So 32,768. So you'd have about. 65,000 and then about 130,000 and then about 260,000 and then about 512,000 and then we have uh, 33,504,000 wait a sec sorry about that so about 512,000 that's a million 48,576 uh, about 2.1 million, about 4.2 million, about 8.4 million, about 6.8 million. This is where we have 33,554,432. So that would be about 67 million. And then this is where we get to be about 100 million. So that's finally uh, larger than the supposed distance to... The greater light, which I know from Genesis, God made to rule the day.
friends, does that look like it's 93 million miles away? Now that, my friends, is a rhetorical question if I ever asked one. And by the way, I wanted to count to 93 million squared, but let's cheat. Let's get our uh, spreadsheet out and uh, just square it right here and right now. Let's just refresh my memory as to what 93 million squared is. We have 93 million. And let's say that number times itself. And I want to get that into the. Let's change the format of that number. So I want it with commas, comma separator. Okay, so we have thousand million billion trillion quadrant. So 8.649 quadrillion. Now let's invert it. One divided by that number. So 1.156 e negative 16 or 1.156 times 10 to the power of negative 16 so I design roof trusses and floor joists and I also designed a cantilever which I'm praying will go over well because I'm an engineer in training either way when I go to design something The input goes in feet, inches, and then sixteen sixteenths of an inch. And that's even, you know, very precise. Because usually, I know a friend was saying when he built a house, you know, you definitely learn not to worry about an eighth of an inch. Okay, you know what an eighth of an inch is? 0 0.125. So even an eighth of an inch is insignificant. One divided by eight. Insignificant. So then what about a sixteenth? Even more insignificant. A thirty-second of an inch? But on a tape measure... Which I'm going to show you. you can actually get it accurate to a 32nd of an inch. That's the little tick between the smallest little ticks that you can see there. So you have your half an inch, and then your quarter inch, and eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch. And so there's 32 32nds of an inch in one inch. So I've talked to some people who work in machining. They might get down to a thousandth of an inch. So that's extremely rare. You have to be really specialized to get down to that. So then imagine a millionth of an inch. Even a 93 millionth of an inch. But no, no, no. We're not going to settle for that. The inverse square law of light tells me that if you want to know how much you're going to see of a source of light at a given distance, you need the inverse square of that number. 
We're not saying 1 divided by 93 million. We're saying 1 divided by 93 million squared. That's why I said 8.469 quadrillion. So we're talking about quadrillionths. And again, that comes to 1.156 times 10 to the power of negative 16. So you know how they talk about nano technology and nanometers. So nano, so that would be 10 to the power of negative 9. So um, in my opinion, the inverse square law of light, as I said in one of my video videos, blasts. No more night, no more globe, the night is past. So if you do a duck, duck, go search for Daniel Robbins uh, inverse square law of light, you should be able to find that video. Or you can search through my videos if you just click on most popular, should be near the top. And it is one of my favorite videos. And then there's another one, uh, something like Spherical Theories Game Over Pac-Man Style. So if you look for the Pac-Man Style one, I really kind of elaborate on what I mean by the law of inverse square. And one of these days I am going to count, as I did, to 8.649 quadrillion. Not just 93 million, just to really help show that uh, they've taken advantage of us and our ignorance of the actual meaning of these numbers. And I don't like that. I don't like children being sacrificed and harvested for their adrenochrome and body parts. So in the pre-born baby sacrifice, also known as abortion, also known as woman's, again, bear with my saying it again, but... I pray I've earned the right to say this, but silly right to choose, okay? I want to say that sensitively. Some of you women think that if a guy is pro-life, he's really uh, overstepping his bounds. And I want to say to those ladies, sorry, because uh, I haven't always been consistent. I've uh, definitely... Uh, Definitely not always been consistent. And I apologize for that. And I pray that God will uh, simply continue to work in and through me so that I mature more and more and uh, just have nothing to do with pornography. Then, see, first came Playboy in the 1950s and then came... Uh, what I call pre-born baby sacrifice, the late 1960s. So, uh, for me to be looking at pornography is just like sleeping with the enemy and totally compromising my credibility. And uh, it's a winning battle, but it is an agonizing one and uh, one that I continue to fight and will continue to fight for as long as I have to, and uh, men, if there are men out there who, maybe there are men who currently struggle with pornography. Um, Russell Brunson has a website. I think it's overcomingpornography.com. I know I keep carrying on here, but. By the way, have you ever heard of Matthew West? Because he's got a great song called Something to Say. And uh, so I just typed in overcomingpornography.com. Well, there we go. See, I kind of knew that Russell Brunson was a Latter day Saint, and sure enough, and by the way, I want to put in a word for Latter-day Saints. I love them. In fact, when, and yes I do, when I go with my friend to visit 
um, his church, which is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Last, I went last uh, light day, also known as Sunday. And they, they didn't even introduce me um, as a visitor. But there have been times where they have tried to, and then the bishop just speaks of, ah, he's practically a member of a member anyway. Which I'm really humbled by, because I don't go there very often. And uh, I know that this might get me in hot water with some of you right there. Well, I uh, I do stand in, in defense of my uh, Latter-day Saint uh, brothers and sisters. They're uh, just some of the most amazing people I've ever met. And... Uh, they even remind me of the Rechabites in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was told, I want you to sit those Rechabites down and give them wine to drink and see what they do. He did. He gave them wine to drink and they said, we're not drinking that. Our father Jonadab told us not to drink any wine. So we're not drinking that. And we also don't own land. Just some very... Uh, Kind of unusual rules he had given them but they were abiding by what and god said i am going to honor that they're being true to what they know and i'm going to honor that that's exactly these latter-day saints we have to repent of our bigotry against them because one of the reasons is i went with my friend to a presentation on pornography they're they're on the cutting edge so one of the things the guy said was uh doctors get paid to say that pornography is it's a moral issue it's kind of like spicy food or non-spicy food right some people like their food spicy and other people don't so everybody can just get along well to that i'm simply gonna say uh nice try enemy Nice try to pull the wool over our eyes and uh, put off the day where we uh, wake up to what's going on and just throw it off. Because pornography is not a moral issue. It is a public health issue. I repeat, pornography is not a moral issue. It's a public health issue. By the way, that Instagram uh account i i would have deleted it but i guess it's gonna it's been put to sleep until i awaken it and i pray i'll never awaken it again i don't need that instagram account it's oh man i just knew i had to i would have just deleted it but i didn't know how to do that i knew how to just deactivate it good it's agonizing friends and uh, let me just tell you that It takes determination to want to go on living. It just does. By the way, see this? It's a cleft lip. And my dad recalls how when I was born, the doctor came in looking really sad. <sighs> and my dad wondered, what's the problem? Is this, oh, is there something wrong? That doctor looks really sad. I wonder what the problem could be. And the doctor told him, he has a cleft lip. And I'll never forget what my dad said. And dad, I'm going to send you this video. Um, I love what my dad tells me. He, he basically said to the doctor in so many words, that's it? A cleft lip? I thought there was a problem. We can deal with a cleft lip. That's no problem whatsoever. I love, dad, I love the fact that, that you said that. I would even vow you but i won't he doesn't really uh share he he used to you he he you know he he knows about the king james bible but he i'm way more of a you know king james bible enthusiast than he is but uh dad thank you for the words that you spoke because you spoke life into me you spoke into me that yes there would be challenges and there are when you have a cleft lip, see, I got to share this with you. 35 minutes. Thanks for 
sticking with me, anyone who's still here. If you've had to go, I understand. I don't know if I'd be still watching this, but you got to let me share this, okay? Please, uh, bear with me. And uh, I'll see if I can wrap it up pretty quick. But, so... I love Toby Mac, okay? And he's got a song called Speak Life, which has spoken a lot of life into me. Feel free to look it up. But uh, I was on a bus, school bus, elementary school. I definitely didn't look like this. I guess my teeth must have been crooked. I didn't have this false tooth put in yet. Anyway, I was just sitting on the bus and some other boy got on the bus and looked at me pretty intently and uh, said, you're ugly. And I guess I was young enough that I said, oh, that's fine if I'm ugly, because I was at the age where I didn't really like girls. So I figured, if I'm ugly, then the girls won't like me, and that's fine by me, so whatever. But, uh... It says in Proverbs, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And, uh... Those were not words of life. In fact, those words tried to stick. And I can't deny that things have gotten ugly at times. But uh, fast forward to when I was in my... Uh, I was 23 years old. And... Uh, it was a certain young lady that I'd been getting to know, and I thought she wanted to break up, so I gave her some cards and said, okay, it's been nice. It's been nice getting to know you. Well, she took me for a walk, and she said, I want you to tell me what comes to your mind when you think of Daniel Robbins, and I gave her whatever I had, and she said, well, I think of all these things that come to my mind when I think of Daniel Robbins, and I, and I, there, there are no negative things, and there's... So she said that I was humble, I was extremely... <laughs> And very intelligent and funny and but I remember she said she said uh, extremely good looking and this was coming from a very attractive uh, young lady who was blonde haired blue eyed I mean, how could you get any more beautiful than her? You'd be hard-pressed. And a lot of it was just that she had been through so much that she had just learned how to smile. And it was her smile that made her so beautiful. She had learned to, well, do this. Well, uh, see. Mm -mm. Okay. I mean, I'll try not to crack my face, but... Uh, okay. Been a while since I did that. I love a minister named Joel Osteen. He's known as a smiling preacher and he encourages people to smile on purpose. And it's been a long time since I did that, but let me just say, people, uh, I'm sad to know that mothers are going in for ultrasounds. And uh, see, I love the fact that when I was born, They would figure out that I had a cleft lip after I was born, but nowadays ultrasound technology is being used to detect these things. And uh, way too many doctors coming in with that sad look, not after the baby's been born, but before saying he or she has a cleft lip uh, and then saying you might want to a, B, O, R, T. And why? They might tell the, the parent, well, his or her life is going to be such a struggle. And I have one word for that. 
So, again, so, and again, that's where uh, miracles happen. Where you struggle and you have to tell yourself over and over and you do get wary of saying it to yourself that you want to live. But just wait and see the kind of fruitfulness I know God has in store for me and for us. And uh, I uh, I got to be friends with uh, a guy named Martin. He was adopted when he was a baby, and he married Pearson. And uh, she was not just born with a cleft lip; she was born with a cleft palate. But now they have two uh, beautiful children, and. I've so benefited from that family. And so I know that uh, he shall bring it to pass. So it says in Proverbs, I uh, know in Psalm 37, uh, verse 4 and forward, it says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, or Yehoah, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, or Yehoah, and he shall bring it to pass, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. So again, I know that he shall bring it to pass. And all of this struggle is going to culminate in something so magnificent and beautiful and just utter fruitfulness. And uh, I definitely don't go around saying that we cannot uh, change the world, even that we cannot save the world. On Quite on the contrary. Oh, and I also am very adamant that not only can we be perfect, but we will be perfect and we are going to be perfect. I will be perfect and I am going to be perfect. And uh, this world is going to be saved. Make no mistake about it. You know, we have different ideas of how that's going to happen. But uh, if there's one thing that uh, we're not wrong about, it's the fact this world is going to be saved and uh, it says at the end of Hebrews chapter 11 um, they were stoned they were sawn asunder were tempted were slain with the sword they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins being destitute afflicted Tormented flat earthers, is that ringing a bell? It sure is for me. Don't give up. Of whom the world was not worthy, they. Oh, they wandered in deserts and in mountains, and in dens, and caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided or foreseen some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. So this is where we come in. 
They've done their part. They've run their leg of the marathon. And uh, I'm going to do a thousand mile walk. God willing, I'm going to call it the let's get it walk. But when I do that thousand mile walk, I will have done, if my math in my head has served me correctly, something like just over two million steps. And one of my dreams is that when I do that thousand mile, let's get it walk, I'm able to hand it off to the next group of people that uh, continue that walk and they do the next thousand miles. And then they hand it off to another group of people that does the next thousand miles. And they keep walking a thousand miles until in total we have done 93 million, not miles, but steps. Because again, if my math is serving me correctly and a thousand miles would be just over 2 million steps, then 93 million steps would be, well, let me see here. I guess that would be half of 93 million. Is that right? Or yeah, so yeah, that that is right. That is right. So it'd be about um man oh man. All I know is I think it would be walking a thousand miles, something like forty five times. So there and back, there and back, forty five times. So that the next time somebody tries to say that number 93 million and attach it to miles and claim that the sun is that far away, we just go like this. <laughs> nice try, pal. We now not only see, here's the thing. Counting to 93 million, I encourage it. Let me just be fair though. Let me just be fair. Some of you think it's not counting if you don't count one value after another. I used to think the same thing. 1,023, I've definitely done one value after another. 1,048,576, definitely one value after another. Even about 2.1 million, one value after another. But my brain kind of acted as a wife, even though I don't have one yet. And it's a good thing I don't. I'll be the first person to admit, I am so thankful I don't have a wife yet. Why? Because uh, Haley DiMarco in her book, Marriable, has a chapter on pornography and says, sorry guys, but pornography just makes you slimy. And I am so determined that my wife is not going to be putting up with that kind of sliminess of a husband that's looking at pornography. If you're already married and you've been falling into it, Oh, well, overcomepornography.com. That's cool that uh, I didn't know that was a Latter-day Saint, but I did know that Russell Brunson was a Latter-day Saint. And good for him, man. That's all I can say. Good for him that he's uh, helping people overcome pornography. We have to. And by the way, even men and women, because I know that uh, women struggle with it too. And I'm sorry, women. I'm sorry. That shouldn't even be... I don't even think that should be the case. It's just a sign of the times, and I'm so sorry about that. That not only have men stumbled and fallen into it, but even women have gotten curious. And so sorry about that. All the more determination to just never give up. And uh, thanks for uh, hearing me out. You know, it's been such a good day at work, but oh, and by the way, I'm back at work. So if you're watching this and you're a flat earther, you may not have a paying job. It generally works that way. It's the way it worked for me. And if, if you're unconvinced of the earth being flat, it might just be that you have a full-time job. There, I, I did not discover the earth being flat until oh, I left my paying job to go work for an engineer, but that through, fell through after a month and then... EI, employment insurance hadn't come through yet, but that's when I had the time to look into this and become convinced of it. So that's something else that I pray I won't 
forget is I need to be patient with these people that have full-time jobs and then they just don't have time to look into this. That's where I was at. Um, but I cannot tell you how good it feels to just record this video and uh, look. You might get tired of me praying like this, but we need to. We have to. Oh, I think we have to. I definitely have to. And I know there's a certain group of people that are known for praying like this. And all I'm going to say is, look, if they can do it, so can I. And Heavenly Father, have mercy on me and on us. And be with my friends and with me. As I definitely personally watch Inside Out, I pray that uh, it'll be good. And I also want to even put out there um, Zechariah and Malachi. I'm about to finish reading through the Bible, and when I do, I got a hundred bucks from my parents, and uh, it's so fitting that that will culminate in. Malachi chapter 4 where it says um, I'm coming to turn the hearts of the children to the fathers and the hearts of the fathers to the children lest I come and smite the earth with a curse and with that my friends I I, uh, I say bless you and I love you and good night